Good evening. Welcome once again into our usual slot. This is the third section and the third episode and the last one about elevating community and civil society voices into coalition government dialogue. Where we discussed in the last two weeks what was raised and today we're going to be concluding and we hope that you have learned something and you have understood how do we make coalition governments work. Thank you very much for always tuning in. I think the, the only thing that uh, I would want to add to what you're saying, you don't need to give a response, but it's just something to throw out there. When we talk about legislation that has been created and we say we have created the legislation, and in the same breath, we look at the amount of civic education that we have in the country and how many people can very realistically, how many people understand how local government works. You were saying earlier that, you know, even with journalists who are supposed to be working with some of these issues on a day-to-day -day basis, basis, there's only a very narrow understanding of how it works. So the system by design is exclusionary. So on the one hand, it also suggests that you can't blame people for not participating in a process that they fundamentally do not understand. And there has been very little initiative to ensure that people do in fact understand. But I think that that's a situation that again suits political parties. Because the less we understand, the less involved we are, and they get to run amok and do whatever it is that they want to do. And those are things that we also sort of, if we're to deal with things as they are, we have to be honest about talking about, to say, yes, it's all good and well to say people must get involved, but really, is the space conducive for them to get involved? And if it were, would we be seeing the number of protests that we see in this country on a day-to-day -day basis? Zintle? Having a conversation, on, because coalitions by design are a political arrangement. They are an arrangement between political parties. They operate well in the realm of politics. So to have a conversation about coalitions and not have, at the same time, a conversation on system design. is talking about one side of your body or one of your leg and not talking about the rest of your body when you need to be talking about the rest of your body. And so we need to look at local government at, at a much more holistic manner. I'll give you an example. Executive mayoral systems are elitist by nature. A ward councillor has very little power and influence in an executive mayoral system. They are just a, the, the dude by the door. They are voting for that. They get told what to vote for, when to vote, basically. And so th that's a system that's elitist, that's got bosses and others. And this person that you've elected, shame, however hard they might run around, they'll run until they drop. They have very little power to influence a whole lot of stuff. And so that's a system question. The, the petition system is in shambles. Submit a, a petition in province, in national, ask the people in Makana how many petitions they've submitted in the last five years and how many court cases they've won and what that has translated to. And so there's something in the system that has failed and has collapsed yeah. and has therefore made a majority of citizens quite adversarial yeah. in how they engage the state. And that's not something that we're going to fix by having a coalition that's got people that we think are cute. Even if they like each other. It's not something that we, there's something in the design because the system itself has kicked the majority of South Africans who must hold, go to a council meeting. I, I invite you to go to any council meeting. We did this work for five years and attended 680 council meetings in six provinces. 
Decisions are made in caucus. When they come in there, a matter is tabled and then noted, voted, passed, aye, lele, tu, and that nonsense. You have no bloody idea what they're talking about. You haven't seen the agenda. The what committee that you are with have not seen the agenda. And yet they were meant to see the agenda in the what committee meeting. That's just, if you have an MPEC, they're frustrated to hell. If you have one that works, good luck to you. If you, you have a, 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 what do you call it, an audit committee, it's a technical exercise. And so all of these mechanisms that should help us ask the right questions that influence decisions to our benefit as the public, we kicked out. The door is locked. We can't come in. The only way that people feel like they're able to take power is when they go to the street. Because then that's when those in power listen. Because the design, in the design of the system, they've been left out. In the practice that's established, they've been left out. And so, yes, we must talk about coalitions, but there's other big questions to talk about as well. And that's my argument. And so, what do we do? I agree that we... So, where coalitions work in South Africa, the post democratic well, the post-1994 coalitions, where they work and work well, is when coalitions are formed by parties that seem to coalesce around ideology. That's what we are finding. If there's some semblance of coalescing around ideology, those ones, they seem to work well. There's less contestation and political infighting. They're happy to let the others make the decision, whatever needs to happen. Where there is difference, big difference on ideology, but we've agreed to come together, you need to look very closely there because our coming together is, not, is unholy, very unholy. We don't like each other. We don't agree on the fundamental stuff, but we agree so long as you give me engineering. Um, and so there is that semblance of, can we talk about how we form these coalitions? Because the big numbers, the, the, the quota, um, the, 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 the majority votes, therefore, let's form a coalition. Let's have some kind of a threshold. That conversation puts a lot of assumption and the kinds of assumptions that we've already seen don't work. So we can't, we can't I mean, I would argue that let's, let's revisit that conversation. Let's just talk about it a little bit more because numbers haven't all, have, have not up to far translated to all things in our public good. So that would be the first one. So let's rethink what are the core principles that we would want to put in some kind of a framework. And obviously, this can't be law, but it's got to be like some kind of a framework legislation because you can't regulate in law something that's essentially a political party arrangement. Mm. And so we need some kind of a framework of sorts. And then the second one is those agreements made by those people that have agreed that they're going to work together. Let's make those public. And perhaps maybe the framework must say those must be binding. Um, and then we can scrutinize those agreements and we can make a noise about them if they're not speaking to service delivery or if they're not aligned with what we see, we think should be the vision for our municipality, our city in a five year period. And I'd argue that finally, there has to be some kind of a platform or platforms for engagement and engaging with the members of the coalition because often in coalition-led municipalities, a mayor gets sent to communities, whereas in a coalition, they're limited in how decisions are made. And so there has to be a mechanism of holding the whole damn coalition somehow to account and to ask the difficult questions of the whole lot of them. Um, those would be some, just some of my top of my head um, ideas. Thanks. Thank you. Then over, you let dialogue. Maybe we Mandela University, Nelson Mandela University, Apa, at Heber, Mshaba, is Tayakoska Mandela. Abangenayo, 
sitheta ngcoko ephakathi kwengcuba bocopho kunye nabantu abatheta ke ela aba ulumende badibeneyo coalition governments abanosebenzisa ngayo kuze abantu baxhamle babe nempumelelo ukela ke uve ke ingcoko ekhoyo phakathi kwabahlali nabantu nosoma kwepet where where you 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 landed i would have uh, you know sponsored among the uh, the issues exactly that that at issue really is the the agreements that gets to be entered into have to be subjected to public scrutiny yeah. not only because we want to see and appreciate them and that's it because an argument can come and say anyway all local all government uh, documents are, are of public or many including your idps and and annual reports and all of that but there's a there's a particular purpose for uh, subjecting this one on on public uh, scrutiny in the main it has to be postured around that which is of that community talking service deliver whatever is that agreement so if that is not there as a core value as a core um, rationale of why a municipality would have been established in terms of uh, what is this section 150, 152 so if those elements are not there in the in the in the agreement uh, is as good as you can have that agreement uh, in the space of of, of the community. Civil education and awareness, I think uh, Usopp spoke to that which is the first for me to hear some of the available systems in law, you know, that can be what uh, fostered in or mainstreamed in various instances, including the plenary something something which we generally as communities we, we we do not know that and i think that's that should be the case talking now making people aware so that uh, on the basis of being aware you're then able to participate and partake um you know towards a redress given the situation at the time um the deputation uh, i think trevor are you still here we had it for the first time in the country where civil society speaks in council. Mm. That's here in PE. Mm. That should have been 2015 before Danny Jordan was brought into the seat. We were the first. I'm talking the coalition I'm leading, civil society Absolutely. I'm leading. Mm -hmm. And I doubt very much people are aware that you can apply to the speaker's office and go and say whatever nonsense you want to say to the councillors. Mm -hmm. We did it here in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, so talking now or responding to the elevation of yeah. civil society in the concrete you know, uh, yeah. sense. I can only hope, uh, Deputy Minister, if you're still with us and you, Sops, the mooted uh, framework on coalition does have a, a, an empowering elements that speaks to what I've just uh, yeah. spoken into. But in the absence of that, is as good as this proposal we're making, they may not fly. Because yeah. you must institutionalize it and legislate it somewhat, you know, so that, uh, you know, uh, they, they find the meaning and enforcement. Because yeah. the issue is this element of abandon uh, abayazala as if we say crash, as it were. Uh, I can only hope, yeah. But as is, you need to have it structured in the manner that Nondando and uh, now myself are, 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 are saying in terms of, uh, in terms of that. Uh, other than that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to our panelists. I'm now going to open the session up to you as members of not only this seminar, but also as members of communities, right? And perhaps the simplest way to have the conversation is to ask, well, what would make you feel that your voice is heard? 
what would make you feel that you are included in conversations around coalition governments how different do you envision the experience being and you can use some of the examples that you encounter today and say well actually what we have today is x if i could do y i believe that my voice then would be heard my voice would be elevated what is the difference that you as members of communities are looking for i'll ask you to raise your hand we'll have a microphone that is roving around the room thank you kathy uh, good evening to, uh, good afternoon to everybody present few things one i think we are we are, dis we are approaching this thing wrongly first south africa is involved in a revolution that the parties in government have decided to turn against it uh, completely including the party with political power changes nothing and if therefore south africa is involved in a revolution what is it that uh, both parties in parliament should do unfortunately we've got two sets of parties in in, in, in parliament those that are happy with the status quo those parties that were part of our past parties that were in parliament long before this country was liberated politically that's the first set we have we also have the liberation movement that have also turned against our people including my own organization the african national congress and i'm saying therefore if you are suggesting uh, that we should make uh, these changes that the panel is talking about i'm wondering how is that going to help us in no way can we be helped by what has been suggested there we need to change the only thing of course that we should accept that we need to to change the whole system however a program has to be about liberating the people of this country and involving them in the decision making we are involved in a party political system you are not going to help south africa until you do away with that thank you very much my name is mlam lesuts thank you so much sir and and just for clarity b before you take the microphone away from him i, I wanted you to to just explain when you say that the country is involved in a revolution but the parties are choosing to ignore that what do you mean beneficiation for instance in the mineral resources of our country not a single person benefits except people who are politically connected the rest of south africans are not benefiting that's what south africans were fighting for we're a rich country a very rich country nobody should go to bed without food that's what is happening in south africa that's what i mean by revolution all right let us welcome you back into this program on elevating community and civil society voices into coalition government. Welcome back. You've heard for yourself that were with us, those that were with us, and those that are just coming in, please listen to the conclusion of this interesting dialogue happening here in Mission Vale, campus of the Nelson Mandela University. Unfortunately, my name is Councillor Nobate Mukoko. <laughs> And I also form part of the Council of Nelson Mandela Bay. So I think firstly, let's all understand and appreciate that a coalition government is a result of, of um, organized voices. So we all said, look, we're tired of these ones and these ones. Let's say we gather in this room and agree that we need to be represented. But in council, you're represented by a party. So umsindo or the anger that unites us here against the party will result in us creating another party in order to be represented there which for me is how is probably the first step and how a voice is lost most we we unite and gather 
uh, under one particular frustration then we agree that I must go represent you then I lose my voice firstly being one person and secondly lose my voice, my voice or your voice when I understand how process works and that's a problem we have with coalition at the moment that if I am not mayor I am not something in the in the exco I, I throw tantrums council must not sit certain things must not happen and those are the truths that we need to speak to our people about the second thing which I think is is, is quite important is the truth around the voice or how the voice is lost we start revolutions uh, about but we don't finish them so we gather here but post here we do nothing just as communities so the issue around participation is important. In Nelson Mandela Metro, Salala Silipai, Savuka Silikabeh, and no one or very few people knew how the name change happened because people did not participate. And why are our people not participating? Where is the hunger? Where is the is the drive? And we're not able to respond to that. We don't participate in KFC surveys only if there's a competition but we generally don't participate be it a public meeting, be it an IDP, be it a social media platform, we're not interested and that for me kills the voice because the topic here is elevating community and civil society voices and we must be able to understand where the voices are lost. My last point which I think is very important is what Usisu was saying about the architecture or the infrastructure or the system itself. The truth is the system has become quite political. The civil societies and organizations that are supposed to be non-political have become political. So your objective voice that is supposed to be representing civil society and communities are no longer objective. Law is no longer objective. You go to, to, to a, a law firm to ask for a legal opinion as to why the sky is blue. They'll give you um, this understanding. You go to a law firm next door with the same facts, same merits, and you're given a different understanding. And then you're told then, go govern with whatever understanding. And that understanding that is used is the one that is determined by how many people have voted for or against. So the conversation we must really have. Another thing, uh, uh, Sis Kathy, is what you're doing. Suppressing time. <laughs> but, but I do think that we need to go back to the participation element, understand it, appreciate it, and participate fully. Thank you. Let, let right. me start by saying this. Um, I've counted the people here inside, and I came late, so please forgive me if I repeat something that was said already before. Um, and I... I'm a wise man, I'm not a fool. Fools talk because they want to say something, and I'm not a fool. So forgive me if I say something that was already said before. I've counted, there are 76 people here, excluding the panel. 45 of the 76 are descendants of the Khoi and the San. Are we invited to be a window dressing of this specific dialogue? God forbid, and I will never allow that. I'm a paramount chief of the in the Eastern Cape. And all these people sitting here are representing me. I told Mr. Hoshe I will be late because I came from Somerset East. And my concern is directed to my brother Son Wabo from Salga. This is my concern. I really thank my forebearers who really fought against apartheid so that we as a people can have the freedom of choice to stand here nowhere before the democrat democratic society or dispensation we could stand and dialogue like this we must really thank the ANC and the PA no no remember the EFF was not there at that time so don't come and and claim low hanging fruits which is not yours we must thank the PAC we must thank Azapo we must even thank the IFP, whatever role they played that time. But I'm saying we must thank the ones who made it possible for us to be here in this sphere of freedom. Once again, I thank them for that. But if we look at EFF, which is a child of the ANC, if we look at COPE, 
which came from the ANC. When we look even now, there's a new party from Comrades Ace Mahashule. It's also coming from the ANC. Something went wrong. We have to go revisit because we, it can't be that you look at me, you think I'm a colored. I'm not a colored. Please look at me again and listen to my voice. I am not a colored. Your treatment towards me is based on your perception about me. And because you think I'm a colored, you treat me like I'm not from me. Ah, the government gazette says a colored is neither a native and is neither white. What is a native? A native in Afrikaans is an unboerling. In other words, you were born, bred, and butted here. The government gazette says, I'm not from here. That's why I'm treated like this. I'm, sit I'm seated here. 45 of the participants here are all descendants of the Khoi and the Sen. I have one minute left. <laughs> so when we look at coalitions, my brother Sonwabo, coalitions don't work. You can see for yourself, it doesn't work. We must go out in 2024 and correct this unjust of the present. Because the, the, the parties that fought for this freedom some time ago are seeing now it doesn't work. Because they wanted to give everyone a freedom of choice. Look now, the IEC said there are 600 registered parties. Oh my God. Just imagine we have over 100 on the ballot paper next year. You will have three pages stapled <laughs> against each other. We will be so confused because there's a party called AIM. There's a, I'm, I'm not saying, please forgive me if I mention the names. I'm just saying AIM, ATM, 80 something, AC. We, we don't know because all the colors are looking like black and yellow and green and all the colors are looking the same they are confusing the voters because the mama and the gogo the young boy they all like me were impartially blind we are color blind we just see one color we see black we see green we see gold we thought we are voting for a camp a party that liberated us and then we voted for something else all right Chief. so salga please work on this thing this is not working coalitions are not working something went wrong go right. back to the parties that fought for this freedom because something went wrong the time when the udf was there when the african national congress was ba was banned it was us who fight for this freedom tata uh, tata um uh, the former president uh, uh, Tom Becky said this, com this country is keeping an audible silence on these things All right. o open your mouth start talking about these things we are here, we are going nowhere and we are part and parcel of moving forward thank you so much Chief <laughs> alright let's give our panelists a round of applause please thank you all for your participation I think on that note, I'm going to invite onto the stage Dr. Ongamam Dimga to come and give us at least his official response and suggestions to the conversations. And give yourselves a round of applause, by the way. That engagement was really honest and robust and went a long way in helping understand the issues. Thank you so much to you and your panel for those insightful um, uh, inputs. I tried as much as I could to capture them. And also thanks to the, to the, to the participants or the community at large uh, for, for participating. I'm trying to project a screen uh, because I, I, uh, I think in graphs and tables. Uh, so, so I think it will help me if I can, yeah, can we get the front lights off? They're already off. Maybe these ones too. Um, I'm going to do a quick, quick summary, uh, colleagues, in terms of the input that's been presented here today. One, there's been, uh, and in fact, the, the panelists actually did my, made my job easy by recapping on what they said. So I'm not going to dwell much on this slide. So here, there's uh, our diagnosis or their diagnosis together with yourselves 
is that there's a problem with the structure and therefore there's been suggestions made in terms of what we can do to resolve that problem. There's been an issue of agency that has been cited that uh, we have a problem with agency and the various agencies has been re uh, stated. And then lastly, a comment which when it started, I was listening very carefully there, Budim uh, whether you are going to take us back to you know, the glorification of the revolution and, 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 and I liked how you've then narrowed down. And I, I was thinking you want us to go back to Kong Song. And I saw that in your analysis, you're actually including all of them who have now become problematic now. Not our historic enemy, but our current enemy, if you like, I dare say. So on the structure, we've spoken about uh, qualifying criteria. Let me talk to you, uh, uh, let me challenge you while you don't have a chance to respond, uh, Brasobs. So you're talking about the need to introduce qualifying criteria for politicians, right? In order, and that is that is an interesting idea. But you then, when it comes to the audit function, the public the audit function, you are talking about a process of of taking away from the professionals and bringing it back to communities. This is interesting. And in fact, it reminds me of the philosopher King's argument, Ka, Ka Plato. Okay. So we want qualified people to lead. There's a book by, uh, and, and in fact, this is one of the things I wanted to say. There's a book by Stephen Friedman that talks about power. I'm forgetting the title. It's got a green cover and power in action, but he explores this question of, uh, I think what you were saying when I put so know about that, we're in a phase of a, a, an evol evolving and consolidating democracy, right? Now, he talks about the idea, and I think I heard also now and then to talk about popular sovereignty. The, the, the idea of governing or handling government such that it delivers the outcomes that society wants, the people want. Not government to deliver the outcomes of elite interests or business interests or organized groups. So the big question of democracy, and, 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 and Stephen Friedman argues this point that what we can talk about democratic consolidation. And when we talk about democratic consolidation and the idea of the only game in town, we mean government can be changed in demo, through democratic means. And we say that's democra that democracy is consolidated. But that democracy is not consolidated until substantively government delivers to the popular will what the people want, right? And how you get government to deliver to what the people want are some of the things that you have highlighted and I'm going to highlight quickly in the next slide. So anyway, qualifying criteria. Uh, Stephen Friedman makes many examples of how disastrous the educated elite have led the world, not just South Africa alone. To add to the point that there is nothing about education per se that delivers great results. Per se, education per se. Uh, and, 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 and competency is not assumed. Who delivered state capture? I mean, if you think about, sorry to use the name of Brian. Brian is among the creme de la creme of the treasury boys. Uh, during the Mbeki's, Mbeki's time. And then there's a change of emphasis in terms of what's important in government. And creme de la creme becomes not. If you look at all the people, uh, the, the chartered accountants, the Ndoni, it shows that there is nothing substantively. I'm a strong believer in introducing some qualifying criteria. But it has been proven that it's not education per se. That is our salvation. It's somewhere between education, integrity, and commitment to the popular will. 
And the popular will is what makes me to be able to say, I am the city manager. The instruction from whether it's, uh, okay, let me not call the houses of, politician, of political party. The, the, the instruction from the regional office, from the office of the secretary or the chairperson, is that in a particular tender, I must appoint so and so. And I know that so and so is not going to deliver the best outcome for the people. A person committed to the popular will, educated or not, is going to be able to say, no, we cannot do what you want. We had an executive mayor there here. At the time that he was mayor, I know he's went on to study and, be, you know, at the time that he was mayor and getting instructions from his comrades to say, do this in that tender. He was saying, no, there's no way we're going to do this. The party system uh, made sure that that person uh, is removed from government. So while I support the idea of fiddling with the structure by introducing some qualifying criteria, let us not lose the essence of what our constitution is about. By the way, by the way, our societies know who the competent are. If you go to any community and you ask for who can be chosen to manage finances, in fact, I was having this in a debate where a person was presenting a paper about Imigalelo and how Imigalelo don't have systems. And I said to them, you are mistaken, Imigalelo have systems. The, the women's savings clubs, the community has, co has got competences to know who can be trusted to handle Imaliom Kalel and who cannot. It's an inbuilt mechanism of determining quality and integrity and, if, and potential to lead. So if we went in a community and say, tell us who can lead Imi Kalel or the best and handle and administer finances the best and we are going to be told, I don't go even go to so and so. Go to so and so. Now there's a system, the point I'm making is if we, if we are able to democratize in the spirit of decoloniality, if we are able to democratize processes of selecting the qualified and include principles that we, we gain from even communities, we'll be able to actually come up with something that's not going to be exclusionary. We don't want, uh, we do, uh, and, and I'm saying the very same principle that informs the thinking about taking away the professional auditor must be the same thought process that talks to how we choose the politician. I'm not going to talk about everything else on the slide because here is what you, you yourselves were talking about. Let me quickly point to this. Uh, for me, how much, how much more time do I have? I know we are running over time. Ten minutes, okay. Sure. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me let me see if I can do this in two minutes, three. Uh, so here, because I want to talk to that issue of non-participation and agency, I thought let me put out here what are the ways in which communities engage with government. Okay. In the one column, I put relations. What's the nature of the relationship? Here, what is the mode of engaging? And then in the last one, my sense of where that is. On the left, first of all, we interact with government and municipalities in particular as individual and collective users of their services. How do we do it? Through customer care centers and, 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 and councillor's offices and line departments. So if you, uh, if you don't have electricity, you are going to go to the customer care center, but you're also going to go to the electricity department or your counselor, right? What, what, what is the issue with this? The issue is that we experience municipal or public services individually and sometimes collectively. The reason why we have limited participation in collective structures is that for the longest time, citizens interpret their reality and how they interact with government from the perspective of, 
okay, I, I, it's just me. I don't have money to pay for this. I'm going to have it next week. By the time they realize, no, man, there's just too many of us who are experiencing financial issues to such an extent that what I thought was my individual problem is in fact a collective issue. Then only then do we become angry enough to start taking action. So for example, generations of post-apartheid students, including myself, went through the exclusive practices in higher education until in 2015, 2016, the fees must fall activists of the time making what was otherwise individual family and uh, individual and family experience to become collective experience then all of a sudden we were asking ourselves but how did we allow this system to brutalize us this much and go through it the reason is we had not yet gotten to that stage where we could see our individual struggles as part of a collective experience such that we would want to take collective action this is the challenge with this thing anyway since it's come up in the today let me end with this one you see we also relate with municipalities or government as co-creators of value and deliverers of services that's my way of talking about what Usisi was standing here talking about and Usisi at the back that they were, that was saying we help add value and service communities, right? As, and this is where the civil of the civil society uh, uh, is. The challenge with them is that they are elitist when I mistake precisely because the system compels them to be elitist in order to get funding. So for example, uh, there's granting aid, which municipal. I don't know if other municipalities do, but Nelson Mandela used to have granting aid. Okay, uh, Upra Monga can say whether or not that's still effective. And then Department of Social Development and private funding. Here is the issue. There has been a lot of money to fund civil society organizations, those that are politically oriented or those that are service oriented. The challenge is that we do not um, prepare in terms of organization building to have a credible organization that can attract funding, that can be funding ready. And unfortunately, we are in a culture where your heart is not enough, your passion is not enough, your sacrifice is not enough. So during COVID, you had lots of people that were calling me because I used to register organization hey ongama auna organization auna NPO a domain because I have access to funding and I need this NPO that's domain and the answer would be why do you need an NPO that's domain because you know that you have ear to connections that can give funding if you go to your community now you will find passionate women mostly, who are not running dormant organizations. They are running organizations that are providing a crucial service, except that they don't have connections. And therefore, your connection that wants to give you money if you can find a dormant organization should actually, in fact, be finding this organization, these many organizations that are working in communities. Anyway, long story short, on the participation plan. How many of us here have attended this year, a public participation meeting for budget, for a budgeting process of the municipality. They should be starting in September. In September, we should be having the municipality going to communities with the to prepare the draft budget, which is going to be completed in April. Any of us, okay, how many of us heard and, 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 or got information that there was a, a call for those public participation meetings? including the councillors. Dianbal and non Dianbal. Okay. Uh, okay, heard. So there isn't as much as hearing in this room. <coughs> I also didn't hear when, when there was a public participation for the budget. Therein lies our problem. Not only 
do we fail to participate? We, but the communication doesn't reach people. When I used to be in the Department of Communications, there used to be full these public participation meetings. But <coughs> they were politicized. They were full of people who had been there because the governing party was mobilizing and putting a lot of money to mobilization. But over time, you get so not focused on your job that even the mobilization to have the meeting is, is shied away from. And as a result of that, participation platforms get limited. So let's go back to actually taking our, our let's take responsibility, let's take our agency seriously and participate in the process. The problem of, of, of participation is proven since Plato's time, since the first, in fact, before the first, the common era, where there were so few who participated in democratic processes. Haley Selassie is said to have said, throughout history, it has been the inaction of those who should have acted, the indifference of those who should have known better, and the silence of the voice of justice when it mattered most that have made it possible for evil to triumph. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mdimga. I think the next time I come to the NMU, I'm going to have a stick in my hand. And it's just going to be so that I can hit the microphone out of people's hands. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to ask that we get to the last item on our program today. And I think today is really an example of how much appetite and thirst there is for deliberations of this nature. And so I echo the sentiment that says, the more of these, the better, so that people's voices can truly be heard. Thank you very much for supporting. Thank you very much for watching. And we appreciate your support. TV. always appreciate your support. You've heard for yourself when we were discussing the elevating of community and civil society voices into coalition government. This can work. It's our democracy. It's our heritage. Let us support. Unye, Nezinye, Izindo, and Nozanazo Pambili Puti. And Gosiga Kulu and good night.